A welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you and this is the DADM 2 NPTEL uh, MOOC uh, lecture series. DADM means Data Analysis and Decision Making 2 and this total course is for duration, this is DADM 2 is for total duration is uh, 30 hours which basically means 12 weeks uh, of 60 lectures, each week we have 5 lectures uh, each for half an hour. And as you know that after week 1, week 2, so on and so forth, we have uh, assignments to be solved based on whatever we cover in that respective week which has just been over. So, in the last 2 lectures for week number 2. So, if you remember that uh, in the last class we were discussing and the fag end that uh, there are other measures of ranking also. So, some were geometric mean methods can be considered, then you have the safety first principles, stochastic dominance, all these things. So, I will spend some time uh, with these methods and then most probably we should wrap up by the 10th lecture or maximum by the 11th lecture which will be in the first class for the third week and start with the general concepts. So, we were discussing geometric mean and if you remember that the in the geometric mean method, I, I, I discussed that you have some decisions. So, decisions is 1, 2, 3, 4 and the general number of the decision is small j and small j changes from 1 to capital J and under E decisions there are, are uh, different alternatives. So, alternatives for each uh, decisions j is given by small i and small i basically change can change from 1 to capital I. So, in the first decision you can have say for example, 3 alternatives. In second one, you can have five alternatives, so so on and so forth. So all these can be very, in a very nice manner, be generalized, and we can basically find out the ranking system. Now, if you remember, I did mention that I, again. I am repeating. Please bear with me. That for finding out the mean, we have basically three means. One is the arithmetic mean, one is the geometric mean, one is the harmonic means. So generally, the geometric mean are used for decisions where the financial uh, returns are there whether financial returns been capital R or small r and I have also mentioned what is the difference between capital R and small r. I have done it at least twice or thrice, I will come to that if we need uh, to basically go into the depth of that and solve other problems. Now, when you find out the geometric mean, you basically rank them from the highest to the lowest similarly as you do for the mean value or the expected value and if you are going to take the inverse of um, this uh, geometric mean or arithmetic mean or the ratio of the variance to the mean or the variance to the geometric mean, we follow the same procedures by taking from the least to the highest. So, with this discussion, I will continue further on reading the concept of geometric mean. So, maximizing the geometric mean, mean return is equivalent to maximizing these, the statements which I am going to make have theoretical proofs or theoretical background, but I am just mentioning these as bullet points so which you can make a note. So, obviously, they would not be coming in the problem solving point of view, but just for your set of information. So, let me continue reading it. Maximizing the geometric mean return is equivalent to maximizing the expected value of log utility function. So, if you remember uh, in the in the initial case, what we considered was basically there was utility function which, which was uh, quadratic. And I also mentioned that the returns based on the fact that the utility functions are quadratic would be considered a normal and this is an if and only if relationship means both way implications. So, if you come to this, so you have the geometric mean and, and geometric mean return is equivalent to maximizing the expected value of the log utility function. So, it is now log utility function not the quadratic utility function. Projects, investment, portfolio, decisions that maximize the geometric mean, this is the second bullet point that maximize the geometric mean returns are also mean variance efficient if log return, if returns are log normally distributed. So, in the case, if you are considering the mean variance concept uh, which is efficient and if, if the distributions are log normally distributed, then uh, the decision which you are going to take using the geometric mean would, would basically also mean that you are basically considering the mean variance uh, efficient frontier and based on that decisions are being taken where you maximize the geometric mean or basically take the mean variance concept efficient concept and also 
rank them accordingly provided the returns are log normally distributed. No, no other, other distributions we will consider here for the ranking. Now, we will come to the concept of safety first principle. I in this um, in the in the last two lectures which which one we have just started the ninth lecture which is the second last one in the second week and the tenth one which will be the last one in the in the second week. I will first go through the concepts. Uh, problems uh, whatever they would be very simple you have to only be aware of normal distribution and if you remember normal distribution normal distribution tables on these things i had discussed in general details in dadm1 so i am sure people who have done dadm1 or who have the requisite knowledge about simple uh, case of normal distribution standard normal distribution all these things will be quite quite fluent in trying to solve the problems that that um, i can assure you so, coming back to this uh, safety first principle. So, under the safety first principle, the basic tenet is that the decision maker is unable or unwilling to consider the utility theorem for making his or her decision process. Under this methodology, people make the decision placing more importance to bad outcomes. So, rather than looking at the good outcomes, rather than thinking of what is positive, I am always think I means the person who is taking this, this concept of safety first principle as the guiding principle based on which he or she will, will make a decision. He or she is basically thinking of the negative outcomes, bad outcomes. So, her choice set, obviously she has in front of her or he has in front of her the positive returns and the negative returns, but he or she would basically make the decision based on the negative returns. I am going to like come to that uh, later on. So, technically means that say for example, I win 1000 rupees and also I, I, I lose 1000 rupees. So, I may my main concern is not to place uh, or make the decision based on the positive returns, but basically to find out the fact that what my decision should be based on the fact that I have lost 1000 rupees. That means, I am only looking at the negative returns. So, in safety first principle the rules uh, rule mathematically are given as you minimize the probability of R p is less than R l. What is R p and what is R l? I am going to come to that. The second one is this basically you maximize R l. These R p and R l, this p and l are all the, uh, the suffix and another case you basically maximize the average value which is r bar p. Now, let me draw it with a very simple concept of normal distribution in this, um, uh, this slide and that would be much easier for me to discuss. I will come to that uh, later on, uh, just give me, uh, let me discuss it and, and, and then I will come to that. So, uh, let uh, with, with the discussions that means, the theoretical knowledge let me give, give you and then I will come to drawing it and giving you a good feel. Now, in the safety first principle, you are considering the minimization, minimization probability of R p is less than R l. Number 2 is you maximize the uh, some stipulated value of R l. So, this R l and R p are totally two different things. One is basically uh, corresponding to the fact that what is the decision you are taking and another is basically giving from the environment. That means, you have some risk concept based on that you want to basically fix your returns or your risk at a certain level and another one is basically you want to maximize so called average returns of the decisions we are going to take. So, as I mentioned the safety first, I will I think I will should draw it uh, which I did mention few minutes back. So, it will be easier for us to understand. Okay. Before I draw the, uh, the distribution, let me make few things very clear. Number one, we will consider the normal distribution. Why? I will come to that later. It can be changed to other distribution also, do not worry about that. Number two, we will consider that you have a set of decisions to make and the set of decisions to make in, are in such a way that you have some limited amount of money or limited amount of resources or some constraints is there with respect to the amount of investment we can make. So, if say for example, for any decision, there are 10 different alternatives, these alternatives, the amount of investment which you can do in these alternatives to, to get a overall decision, decisions would be based on the amount of money you are going to invest or amount of say for example, investment you are going to do or amount of resources you are going to do. So, that 
thing will denote like in the financial financial perspective will de denote is at a portfolio that is why the letter suffix p point 1. Point number 2 is that this suffix l basically returns based on a, a certain uh, set uh, informations uh, which, which you as, as a decision maker are get, getting from the environment you will fix some return based on that. So, this R L for the timing will consider this to be the say for example, the investment which you can make when you basically invest in a risk free interest rate in the bank, which is the interest rate which the bank is, is paying to you if you deposit your money and keep in a fixed deposit. So, this R L is a set of, of returns which you want to uh, beat or over that you want to basically earn the extra amount of money. And RP is basically the overall returns which you are make going to make from the portfolio based on the different type of alternatives you have in front of you. And your main criteria is to find out the weights or the investment which you are going to make in the different alternatives such that you get the best portfolio. So, I will basically draw the normal distribution. And remember this, uh, this can be done for other distributions also. This is the mean value. Now, I will change the color and notify that. So, this distribution is basically for the return which you are getting from the portfolio or the different combinations of portfolios which you have. Point 1, this average value which you have is basically R p bar, which is actually the expected value of the return of the portfolio. Now, remember as the weights change, as the returns change, returns means returns for each and every individual investment, because the p has whole lot of investments under it, that is, is a basket of, of goods you are investing. These returns as they are changing, the amount of money which you are investing in, in different um, uh, alternatives are changing this R p would be a random variable. If it is a random variable, it will have a distribution. That distribution we are considering as normal as I have drawn. Now, this is given as a distribution for R p. Now, what we want is, now this one another important thing, I will just highlight it. This value of greater than less would depend on the type of problem you are going to solve. So, here you, you being a risk averse person in the sense that your safety first principle is more important for you. You want to minimize the probability or minimize the overall coverage of the area such that your returns from the portfolio is as much as far as possible it is less than R, R, R L obviously it would be, but you want to minimize the distance or minimize the area. So, let me draw it. So, let me mark R L by a different color. So, let this be R L, R L can be anywhere on the left on the right. And now, what I want is this, the overall area of the return R P should be such the, the area which I am mark, marking by this light orange is as minimum as possible, which means the value is this, we want to minimize as, as less as possible. Point 1, so this is basically, so you will try to basically have the return of the portfolio corresponding to the investment such that the area is minimum. It would not be 0 obviously, it will be as minimum as possible. So, let me consider this would be say for example, alpha. So, the overall area is alpha and this area let me mark it with another color. Hmm, this is fine.
let me do it neatly so you can understand. Okay. So, the blue color is basically the area on to the right. So, you want to ma maximize that, so, but you are looking at the negative value that so the hence you are trying to minimize the probability of R p being less than R l. So, this value what you will have will be 1 minus alpha. So, this would basically be the safety first principle for the first rule. Now, consider the second one and uh, let us consider on this diagram only and I will try to make you uh, understand it using different colors. So, consider maximization of R L means you are trying to push R L onto the right. So, technically if it is happening which means the distribution by itself will also move on to the right hence the probability of R p less than R L would be maintained in some way even though the, the rules are, are, are um, uh, different, different in the sense they cannot they do not run at the same time they are different rules based on which you are going to take the uh, decision of safety first principle. That means, what is happening is I am trying to basically push R L as far as to the right as possible. So, if I consider So, this was the first one I think I should use different colors in order to make uh, our life. So, this was So, this would basically come the case would be this second one being for moving on to the right. So, this will be this. So, these values which are moving on to the right. And the last part is maximizing the average value that means, you are pushing the average value onto the right. So, the distribution will also move. So, I will use a different color if yes, so, it is difficult, but I will try to highlight. So, this means you are, so they are not green they are basically yellow, but blue and, and yellow becomes uh, green. So, you are pushing them to the right. So, this is the value. So, these green actually mean where I am highlighting that means, you are pushing R p bar average value which is the third rule maximizing R l that means, you are trying to push R l onto the right. So, these are actually brown, but they become black because the background is blue. So, these are the values and the first principle safety first principle the first bullet point is minimizing the probability that means, you are minimizing the alpha value and trying to basically maximize 1 minus alpha. Now, the issue is do would they hold it for other distribution my answer is yes you can do that, but the beauty of the normal distribution is like this and I will only highlight the fact based on the first um, uh, bullet point also. So, I will just write the rule such that you can understand why I mentioned that you can use the normal distribution and the standard normal distribution table. So, I will use the color black. So, this is the first one only remember that. So, I will just highlight and come to this. So, I can write this probability as R p 
माइनस आर पी बार बाय सिग्मा ऑफ आर पी व्हिच इज द स्टैंडर्ड डिविजन फॉर द रिटर्न फॉर द पोर्टफोलियो बीइंग फॉर्म फॉर्म्ड इज लेस देन आई विल पुट द लेस देन इक्वल टू साइन आल्सो आर एल माइनस आर बार पी डिवाइड बाय सिग्मा आर पी so this continues to be remain as alpha now if i do that it implies this implies probability of capital z is less than equal to small, small z this also is equal to alpha now you know the distribution the standard normal table z is given from based on that you can find out so given R L or given R P bar, you can find out alpha or or any of these three two values being given, you can find out the third. So hence, using the normal distribution becomes very easy when you are trying to utilize and understand the concept of uh, safety for principle, the first bullet point. And this can be done for the second and third also. But if the distribution changes, obviously you have to do some simulation studies, which we will come in D A D M three where you consider the different type of reliability based robust optimization when the distributions are not normal per se. So, if returns are normally distributed, then the optimal portfolio will be the one where R L, which is the stipulated value which, have, which we have set for ourselves, is basically would be the maximum number of standard deviations away from the mean value. So, whether it is on, uh, on the right or the left, you can decide whether you are trying to take the positive returns on the negative returns. So, I will come to all those things later on. So, let us consider an example of for minimization of probability R p is less than R l. Remember, we consider the returns are normally distributed as I mentioned and the suffix p denotes the portfolio while R l means a fixed level of returns, which we for our case are considered as 5, 5 percentage just I am taking the value of 5. RP values which are given based on the fact you have invested some amount of money in different type of investment and the overall combined returns for, for the decisions A, B, C are respectively 10, 14, 17 as you can see as in the first row for this table. The standard deviation for corresponding to those investment or the decisions which we mean by the portfolios for A, B, C are given by 5, 4, 8 respectively. And if you find out the difference from 5 percent, this 5 percent is basically the returns which you have considered R L, they come out to be, if you are taking on the ne negative side, on the left hand side, they come to be minus sigma A, they come to be minus 2.25 sigma B and they come to be minus 1.5 sigma C. So, these A, B, C suffixes are corresponding to the decisions A, B, C. So, you can normalize them and find out for which the overall R alpha value is reduced the maximum and you can take that decision accordingly. Now, again I am repeating this is very nice to solve, very easy to understand and you can use a standard normal table solve different type of problems if the distribution is normal. In case it is not obviously as I said you have to use different type of simulation and mathematical techniques for that. So, here I have again drawn uh, two different distributions. So, the one which I have drawn was basically the, uh, the normal distribution. Again the same normal distributions are drawn, but remember here there are two things. Number one the average values are changing. So, I will basically use the yellow highlighter because the colors are blue green. So, it will be easy for me to highlight using. So, or the orange one light orange. So, this is R bar P average value is the green line and the distribution is given by this green normal distribution. While for the case for the investment A, I have not drawn C, only A and B are drawn. So, for investment A, investment in the sense the decision A based on the investment which you are doing, the average value is R bar A and the corresponding um, values for um, uh, standard deviation. So, plus minus uh, sigma that means you are going minus on to the left if I am looking at the diagrams onto the left and plus sigma onto the right. The values are given as 2 sigma suffix b, 2 sigma suffix a. 
and if you look at RL, RL is somewhere on the left. So, what I aim to find out is the area for the green distribution, what is the area on to the left? Similarly, I will find out the distribution corresponding to the blue one, what is the area on to the left and based on that we will find out the values and rank them accordingly. So, if I basically use the, the formula, so probability of I am just writing the final one for R, B and A separately. So, this would be R B minus R B bar divided by sigma B is less than equal to R L minus R bar B divided by sigma B. So, this will give me say for example, I, I write, write it on the left hand side alpha 1. Similarly, find out alpha 2. So, alpha 1 and alpha 2 are basically coming on from here diagram. So, this is probability of R A minus R A bar by sigma A less than equal to R L minus R A bar by sigma A find out alpha 1 and alpha 2 and you can solve the problem accordingly. So, you just use the standard normal. Now, in order to determine how many standard deviations R L lies below the mean, we calculate the R L minus the mean returns which we have done the left hand side if you remember. So, this which is basically what you find out is the small z. So, minimizing R L minus R P by sigma P is same as trying to basically put the negative values and then you get uh, the in place of minimum you get the maxima. So, this will be maximum of R p bar minus R l divided by sigma p. So, the probability the, the optimization problem if you want to solve it remains the same. So, this is also equivalent to the fact that I am basically replacing R l by R f. Now, if you remember this R f is basically the standard on uh, this risk free interest rate based on which you will basically rank or peg your decision that how good or bad it is. So, with this I will close this uh, ninth lecture and continue more discussions about the safety first principle in the tenth lecture. Have a nice day and thank you very much.